you smell that gas and busting up the pack. What's up, y'all? It's Heavenly 2X. Y'all now watching No Adults Allowed, and today we have Andrea. She is an entrepreneur. She has three businesses, and I'm going to let her get into that. My name is Andrea, and I'm a three-time entrepreneur, and I have three businesses. The first one is Fashion Attic Apparel. The second one is Melanin Avenue, and the third one is Girl Boss Teams. Okay. For Melanin Avenue, what is it? Like, what do you do for that? As far as my lip... Melanin Avenue, I'm sorry. I sell um, lip gloss. It's basically a cosmetics line. Um, I range from cosmetics and I also provide wholesale services for um, other local entrepreneurs around the U.S. Um, who sell cosmetics. I offer wholesale services if anybody would like to get you know, lip gloss or anything like that to sell to other people. Okay. I like that. Now let's get into Girl Boss Teens. Like, what is it for? What do you do for it? Like, um, Girl Boss Teams is basically my business consultant pay like business because I like to help people. I like to do events and things like that. And as far as me being an entrepreneur, everything tied into one. And I always used to call myself a girl boss, so I just made the business Girl Boss Teams to help people with their business, basically. Mm -hmm. I like that. And then the last for the last one is Fashion Attic Apparel. Are you into like making logos, clothes? Like, what's that about? Um, as far as logos, that's a part of Girl Boss Teams. But Fashion Attic Apparel, that's my clothing line. And I sell clothing to women. That's my main target audience, women. That's what's up. Okay. Um, let's tap into what is a good social media image to you? Um, a good social media image to me is basically... Um, like as far as me, I'm not gonna speak for other people, I'm gonna say myself. Um, as long as you live in your regular life but you still on top of your business, I feel like that's all that really matters to me. But at the same time you can't be on Instagram and social media, Facebook, Snapchat and things like that, running around fighting, you know, that's not something that people if you around fighting, people not gonna wanna shop from somebody who just Fighting, always into altercations, always on live arguing with somebody, always getting into it with somebody. Oh, yeah, that's the, she always, I don't want to, that's an image. And it's a lot of times when people try to blemish my image by, like, I recently um had somebody break into my home. And I had to see how I was going to approach the situation without, you know, coming to it as an altercation without social media knowing what I had going on outside of what was going on on social media. Agreed, agreed. So, a principal of mine, she was actually a basketball coach too, she used to tell me like, ladies are seen, not heard. So, do you feel as if that applies to also having a good social media image? Yes, ma'am, like, it's for like, like you're saying, seen, not heard, the way you dress. Mm -hmm. I went to school for being a business, I mean, for being an entrepreneur, and that's one of the things we had to learn, how I dress. Like, these pants I got on here, um, I've been having these for a little while, from back when I was going to business school. Mm -hmm. My business teacher basically taught me, you know, how you dress is how um, somebody would approach you. Like, I hang around a lot of different entrepreneurs, like her sitting right here. Um, she or be seeing me with my other entrepreneur friends. Every time they come around, they got suits on they got business clothes on, they got suits on, so people will know how to approach them like, he a businesswoman, oh, he a, she a businesswoman, so definitely your um, appearance matters as far as being an entrepreneur. Do you feel as if that social media is kind of, well, the world is based off social media today? Like, do you feel as if everything is like, you know, people don't even, I feel as if people don't even watch the news no more, everything you find out on social media. Do you feel like that? Like, yes. Yeah, I do. definitely feel like that because as far as being an entrepreneur, like how I make myself, I can go out into the real world. I do put myself out into the real world and promote my business and things like that. But if you go on Instagram or you see people doing these business classes and entrepreneur classes, it's they trying to see how to get to your target artist. That's on social media. How to make sales. That's on social media how to grow your business, that's on social media, so definitely. Got you, got you. And with being an entrepreneur, are there any 
times where you get discouraged with your businesses if it's not like let's just say it's not enough people sharing your stuff on social media people you know tapping in let's say you make a lot of of one product and all of them don't sell That's what I'm saying. um discouraged if i ever get discouraged it wouldn't be from the lack of like sales or anything like that mm -hmm. that'll be from my mental illness like I'm so business driven, it's nothing that can stop me ever. It's just I like it's something that. that I love to do. I like that. I like that. Okay, let's tap into you personally. Like, was it. Well, I know it was hard. So, how do you feel like. Do, well, do you feel as if from your mom passing away and dad not being around as much, do you feel like that actually. Motivates you more to go harder? Um, yes, definitely because I see a lot of people, a lot of young girls come to me like, my family don't support me. I don't have friends that support me. I want to start a business, but I don't know. Who, that don't mean like it's all, to, it's all up to you. Like your family, they can support you, but your family don't put in that hard work, sweat, and tears. That's you, not your family, not your supporters, not your clients, not nobody. It's you. So how much you work, how much work you put in is you gonna get the outcome eventually? Cause it took me years. Like I've been an entrepreneur since I was 13, and I'm just now that last pop up shop I had. I just I'm just now getting people to come out. I'm just now getting people like sales online. I'm just now I've been doing websites, but now that I'm doing getting being on top of my stuff, you know I'm getting more supporters as I'm coming. It's definitely showing. Like my outcome is showing. That's what's up. I like that. Do you? Oh, you go ahead. That's right. But um, as far as my dad being incarcerated, like um, he pushed me a lot, even with him being in jail. That's my number one supporter, especially after my mom died, because my mom was my number one. Since she passed away, now my dad is. It's not a time that he don't support me. That's what's up. That's what's up. So I like your mindset. I feel like you on track with it. It's like you're not one of those ones that's more so focused on. Who going to support you, who not going to support you, who going to be there, who not going to be there. I like where your mindset at, but do you ever feel like there's like a time where you just get so overwhelmed or jammed up with everything, you feel like I just can't do it, I can't do it no more? I ain't even going to fake it like, no, like if I ever feel like it's too much or I have too much on my plate, I'm not scared to ask for help. At one point in time, I was because I felt like, okay, if I asked them for this, they going to go back telling the next person, you know, I helped her do this, now she. But I know if I ask you for help, it, it's, it has to be genuine. If it's not genuine help, I know a person wouldn't help me. So anytime every, anybody ever came around and helped me, it was genuine help. So if I'm ever too cluttered up with anything or I feel like it's too much on my plate or anything like that, I ask social media for help or I ask my dad for help. But... Mm -hmm. I never stop though. It's nothing that can make me stop. This is this hard. So, since you've been doing this since you was thirteen, um, do you feel as if like there are more businesses you are looking to like start doing more and more? Like you gonna expand or you just gonna stay in the three business uh -huh. range? I know I'm going to stay in the three business range, but I know, like, as far as having a cosmetics line, cosmetics ranges from a lot of different things, like cosmetology, that's her, nails, and all that. Like, if I wanted to, you know, I do her and things like that, but I don't have a passion for it, so I don't see myself, you know, furthering it, but I do see myself selling makeup products and things like that as my business gets bigger as far as my cosmetics line. And then with um, Fashion Etic Apparel, um... Oh, my bad. Show your brand. Yeah. Fashion Etic Apparel. But as far as Fashion Etic, um, I don't really feel like, um, well, I don't think I'll be furthering anything. Like, I feel like I'm just going to keep dropping, like, new collections mm -hmm. and things like that. But as far as girl boss teams, I feel like the sky is the limit. Ain't no stop. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm always going to come up with new ideas, new events. I'm just creative, so. I like this. I like where your head at. Um, 
what inspired you to actually start being an entrepreneur like for me I, well I've never been an entrepreneur I've always did other stuff but for me it's like I feel like there's nothing out here that you can't do you know like you said the sky is the limit so why not do different things like I'm right now I'm in the process of just doing stuff that I think that I you know succeed in and also make money so what inspired you to actually start being an entrepreneur what inspired me to be an entrepreneur was I was raised in my grandmother's house and my mother she was still living at the time but my granny had seven kids to take care of on top of her own kids so it was like you know my granny provided as much as she could but say like I'm just like I'm not I wouldn't say I'm materialistic but I like keeping myself up to date her done nails done and stuff like that and as far as my granny I just didn't want to feel like I was a burden on her life. So anything I ever wanted, I felt like I had to get it myself. So I started off being an entrepreneur when I was 13. I was just, well, really, I was in middle school. And I was selling a little 50 cent bag of chips. And I feel like anything you do to make money, that's an entrepreneur. So but that's really when I started. Then when I made enough money off the chips and stuff, I got me a little bracelet kit, started selling bracelets. Then when I was selling bracelets, I had started luxury stash. And I wasn't married, but it was mainly because my I feel like my granny had too many people to take care of, and mm -hmm. I just wanted more out of life, so I had to go get it. Mm -hmm. So, as far as being a mentor to teens, how does that make you feel as a person? Like, what drives you to actually be a mentor to young teens? Well, what drives women? What drives me to be a mentor is like. Everybody always asking like, or saying, not even asking like, I I never stop or, you know, everything that I've been through, I never stop and what make you keep going like, drill, like the house situation. I didn't have nothing to my, I didn't have a phone. All I had was my house to my name, my house. That's all I had. I didn't have a phone, a car. I don't have nothing. And I still kept going. I still got up off my feet. I still had that pop-up shop in a few weeks and I still made it happen all by myself. And I just feel like, I'm an inspiration to people, so if I know if I know I can help people, and I listen to Eric Thomas a lot, he's a motivational speaker, and I heard him say, if you can do something for free that you charge for, mentoring I charge for it. And I took the time out of my, I took a whole month, and I took a, a lady younger than me, and I took a lady older than me. Like I said, success don't have an age limit. And I did it for free. And he said, if you can do something for free that you usually charge for, that's your God-given gift. And I knew that was my God-given gift. So I just kept going with the mentor thing. I feel like I inspire a lot of people. So. I like that. Okay. As far as your first pop-up shop, um, Girl. was it, <laughs> what was, like, your biggest downfall? Was it a downfall with your first pop-up shop? Like, I, didn't, I wasn't even there. I was at the hospital. Mental illness, that's real. Like, wow. it's real. I wasn't yeah. even there, but I'm just so, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been doing it for so long. You know, I still was able to make it happen. I'm in the hospital calling my vendors, writing down scripts. I got to say this to this event. I got to say this to this because it was just, I'm in the hospital stressing. Can y'all let me out? Y'all going to let me go home? Y'all going to? No, they was not letting me go home because them, even the people at the hospital seen the entrepreneur drive in me. I wanted to make it to my pop-up shop. But they know stuff like that, my business stresses me out from time to time. So they weren't going to let me make it. But I can't make it. But I know they're going to make it. My yeah. business going to make it. This is my image. I feel like they was trying to blemish my image, and I could not let it go. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. So it looks like you always have your vendors on your side, no matter what. No matter if it's an emergency, whether you're just not feeling good, you can't make it. You just always have your vendors behind you to just, you know, take the spot that you can't. Whenever you're not there. Repeat that for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like from what you just said, um, I feel like, okay, so no matter if you're in the hospital, can't make it, not feeling well, anything of that sort, you will always have your vendors to, you know, back you up or have your back whenever you're not around. Is that um, true? Yeah. Or was that only for just that one time? Are you still doing vendors now, or you just kind of by yourself? 
Um, as far as vendors, like my vendors, I just find them people on social media. I don't even be knowing them from a can of paint. Mm. So, um, as far as having my back, I wouldn't say they would have my back because as far as that situation, some people was upset about me not being there. Some people are owe refunds and things like that. So, having my back is a, no, I wouldn't say having my back, but I got my own back. But they keep me motivated. I should say that. So going further with um, business, no, no, let's touch on mental illness. So with mental illness, is it just within you where you feel like sometimes you get a little, you know, discouraged? Or like you just get overwhelmed. Like what's what's mental illness to you? Like what is your personal? Um, yeah, I'll suffer from depression and anxiety mm -hmm. and um yeah it's really just me but sometimes as far as my depression I get depressed because I don't know I just feel like I'm not where I want to be in life like the crib I'm staying in you know it's cool you know I'm blessed but I know that's not where I want to be I always told my granny I'm gonna give me a mansion I'm gonna have me a maid I'm gonna have me a chef I don't have a pool in my back and not even go. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't ask. But, like, I get depressed because, like, I'm, like, I'll try to, like, I heard the saying, don't look at other people's success and try to, you know, what should I say, um, compare it. Mm -hmm. So, like, the girl, Major Slusher, she's staying in California. Like, it's a lot of other different entrepreneurs I see that's my age, that's so above me. But I ain't gonna say it's competition. It's an inspiration to me. Don't nobody. I don't feel like nobody is competition to me. If we both in the same field of business, I'm going to help you. And if you feel like it's something that you could teach me, I'm going to let you teach me. And if you and if I feel like it's something that I could teach you, I'm going to teach you as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Going back to um, going back on to social media based, I feel as if. For me, um, I'm more so like if I feel like they're not going to support, well, let me start out by saying I like your mindset and I'm going to take from like from this interview, I'm going to take that on because I just I was one of the ones that felt like um, if I was to come out and start a business, I would always look forward to, you know, who would support, how many followers I got to support my business in order for it to go somewhere. But in our reality, it's all about you, your mindset. Um, you having the motivation for yourself to, you know, keep going with it no matter who supports because at the end of the day, it's your business. Mm -hmm. So I just want to piggyback on that and let you know that I 100% agree with, like, you know, just not worrying about social media because I know now in our, you know, age range, social media is a big part. It play a big part for us. Like, you know, mm -hmm. we always on social media, you know, a lot of people get their thoughts from social media, all type of stuff. So, as far as um, your dad's situation, like I know, like I know, you said, you know, he kind of motivates you in a way to keep going. Um, do you feel as if it'll ever be a time where you know, like, you just lose, not contact, but like lose? I don't know motivation with him like no mental illness like when you when you say you suffer from depression anxiety is he one of those ones where like you know you think about him and it just gets you down gets you in a down mood where you feel like okay I can't I just can't do it today mm -hmm. or is it you know consistent motivation from him my dad my daddy show tough love so sometimes like as far as the social media image, like some of the stuff I post on Facebook, used to post on Facebook, cause he would get on me about it. I know I can't post it no more because if I post it, he gonna say something about it. He gonna clown me for posting what I post because he one of the main people that be like, how you gonna be on Facebook selling this, but you on Facebook talking about a dude. And you on Facebook talking about how drunk you got last night. And you on Facebook talking about how many woods you didn't roll, but you wanna sell clothes to somebody. like. My daddy show tough love to support me. So, like, if me and my daddy ever go without talking, it'll make me feel some kind of way. 
And I keep saying it, I keep mentioning it to the people around me, like, even with my granny. I straight ain't talked to my granny in this many days. Me and my granny, that months. I haven't talked to my granny in this many months. I haven't talked to my granny in, you know, so. Mm -hmm. But if we don't talk, it depress me, but I feel like, like sometimes I feel like I'm forcing relationships with people. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, I don't know, I do this as myself. I just, yeah, it like don't that. even just be for my dad and my granny. It be from the world. I be angry. Okay, okay. I agree. Because a lot of times, you know, I get upset from other stuff, and I just, for me, sometimes I get discouraged, but it's like, you know, whether they're going to be there or not, you got to get going. But as far as, like, if me, like, if we stop talking, be with my granny or my dad, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I always had a feeling in my brain and in my mind that don't nobody want to see me win but me. So say for instance, me and my dad or me and my granny get into an argument, okay, cool. They don't want to see me do this, but I'm finna prove them wrong. They don't want to see me do this, but I'm finna go and do it because I know if they, th if they, they probably thinking like, okay, I know we can't help her, so how she finna, I'm finna show y'all how I'm finna do it because it's going to happen. It's going to get done. Shit. You know, but it's just y'all not going to be involved in the process, but it's going to get done. Okay. Yep. So, where do you see yourself in about five years? Five years from now. I'm going to be so bossed up. <laughs> hey. Girl boss. So, girl <laughs> okay. boss. Okay. I'm going to be so bossed up in five years. I really see myself, like, one, I see myself being, like, a six-figure entrepreneur. Like, Standing on stages in front of people, Caucasians, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, African Americans, everybody. Because that's one thing I like to do. I love standing in front of big crowds of people and talking. Like, I've never been shy. I stand in front of the class. I stand in front of the school. I stand in front of anybody. I'm, going, I'm not a shy person. So, I see myself in five years being a six-figure entrepreneur, being so bossed up. Luxury. I'm, I like luxury things. My business is going to be six figures, all of it. I mean, I believe in you. We're going we gonna to turn you up. We're going to keep supporting. So. But I know you're 19, so how did you maintain to keep up all these businesses while you were in high school? <laughs> first things first, I dropped out. But I was strong enough to go back to school and finish and graduate, walk across the stage. But... Being 19 with all this stuff on my shoulders, I feel like that's an aspect. If you're 19 and you got all this and you still making it happen, that's definitely an aspect in your life because there's not too many people that can do it. Mm -hmm. So when I'm, I'm, I love being able to say, yeah, I'm 19, three businesses, you know, I love saying that kind of stuff. So, like, sometimes when I do get overwhelmed, like, last month, when the girl broke into my house, like, I'm thinking, like, you know, when I first called my people, they told me, what you calling me for? Call the police. I answered, like, what I'm finna do? I'm t I am ain't even gonna fake it. At that point, I'm thinking, like, ain't no more entrepreneur dream. I ain't no, ain't no, I ain't wanna be a business owner no more. I ain't feel it. Like, everything was gone. I ain't have a lip gloss to my name. I ain't have nothing, like, so, I don't know, but, the people around me was telling me, like, you've been doing it for so long, and I just was thinking in my mind, I cried all these tears just to quit. I came this far just to quit. Nah, this is just going to be another story to tell. Mm -hmm. so. You kind of let it pile up. Everything that come your way, you let it pile up and just, you know, go knock harder. It, mm -hmm, knock it all out at once. And then so. whatever come next, I'm ready for it because God gives his battles to the strongest people, and it ain't nothing that I can't, you know, do. There's nothing that I can't do. So as far as, okay, how did your high school, well, did you ever think about, like, launching, not launching, but having another pop-up shop around, like, graduation time, or, like, did you have any other big ideas to do around graduation? Like, how was graduation for you with having all of these businesses? Like, what? When I graduated, mm -hmm. what motivated you even more? Like, was it after you graduated, before you graduated, what? Oh, that okay. one, I tell you, my graduation time was the worst, that mental illness, all that, that was the worst time of my life, like, 
I didn't even think I was gonna graduate. I didn't even gonna face it too. Like how I said, like my granny, I felt like my granny didn't think I was gonna graduate because I'm my mama's first daughter. My mama didn't graduate. So that was one thing my granny always used to say to me and my sister, you ain't gonna graduate, you gonna be in the next grade with your little sister. You gonna be flunked with your little sister. Like, so when graduation was coming around, I was just so focused, like I lost so much weight. I was only 99 pounds. Like I was walking back and forth to school every day for two weeks straight, walking back and forth to school because I didn't want to ask nobody for help because, okay, my granny don't think I'm, but I'm finna show you I'm gonna graduate. Like, I ain't talked to my granny up until it was time. I'm, I ain't tell her until I knew the date and the location for my graduation. I let her know when she showed up, but I was walking back and forth to school for two weeks up until my graduation time by myself because I felt like I didn't have nobody. And then, like, at my graduation, did not a brother, didn't know the sister, nobody. Wasn't nobody there. Nobody. But I still walked across that stage. I ain't gonna say I was walking across the stage the happiest, because I walked across the stage in my head down crying. But I was just happy I did it. Mm -hmm. But well, them, them grannies be hard, boy. Wow. I already know. Cause my granny, she real hard on tough love and, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, I had a similar situation with my, my, my parents. So, but. I'm um, excited for you as you further your businesses. Um, more than glad that you actually went and graduated. You know, real inspira inspirational. But that's it for today, y'all. We're going to close it out. Um, I thank you for coming on this podcast. Make sure y'all follow us, well, our podcast at No Adults Allowed. Follow my Instagram at heavenly 2 x and my name, oh, sorry, my name. You can follow me at the only Dread Christine. Dread Christine. And you can follow my three business pages Mel Melanin Avenue, Fashion Edit Capurro, and Girl Boss Tanks. We got merch too, y'all. Don't forget about that. We got merch. We got shirts, keychains, different kind of shirts. You know, y'all know anybody that actually want to, you know, come on a podcast and talk about what they do? Um, inspire others, make sure y'all hit us up and we have